this, the brand new Pixel 2 XL. Coincidentally enough, we're shooting this on a Google Pixel. Uh, it's really hard to tell right off the bat, but this is a body made completely of aluminum. It doesn't feel like it at all. There's a very sort of polycarbonate feel to it. That's because of the finish that Google has applied to the back of this phone. It does have the two-tone design. Unfortunately, we could not get uh, hands-on yet with the beautiful black and white, which is frankly stunning. The panel look is very, very good. But as you can see here, we have the six-inch POLED display. Uh, it does stretch more or less edge to edge, very much like the G6 and the V30's display did. You swipe up, pretty much your stock uh, Android interface, but with some new finish, uh, new flourishes rather. The Google search bar is down at the bottom. You have your running list of calendar events and notifications appearing at the top of the screen, which is new for the Pixel launcher, but very, very cool. One interesting thing that you'll note is that there's really no way to tell, but it does use what Google refers to as Active Edge. It kind of reminds you a lot of how uh, Edge Sense worked on the HTC U11. So, if you grab the phone here, give it a quick squeeze, there you go, that launches Google Assistant. So, what remains to be seen is whether or not you're able to use this squeeze gesture to actually uh, launch different actions. Uh, I'm not sure if that's able to be remapped, no one's been able to answer that for us yet, but it is a really impressive device. So I've got it right here next to the iPhone 8 Plus, very similar in terms of size, although I do have to give the Pixel a bit of an edge here. It's a little bit lighter, and it does seem a little easier to kind of work with with one hand because, again, you do have those smaller bezels on the side of the display, and it does sort of reach up and down a bit further as well. In terms of specs, we are looking at a Qualcomm Snapdragon 835, not the 836, which was rumored prior to launch. That hasn't made a huge difference, though. That is a flagship class processor, and it does run really, really fast. This screen is, as I mentioned, a 6-inch P-O-L-E-D panel, but what's kind of interesting about it is the colors look a little strange. So if we jump into photos... The saturation is a little different. It's not quite what I expected. It's probably coming through a little better on your end than it is on mine, but I'm seeing a lot of sort of, uh, not necessarily dinginess, but it does sort of come off a little on the drab side, which is interesting. Uh, that said, some of the photos here taken with the 12 megapixel camera on the back, that is the camera obviously augmented by Google's really fascinating machine learning technology. So in addition to offering really, really good photo quality right off the bat, it does work with uh, Google's ML tech to, and among other things, simulate a uh, portrait mode that gives you depth of field effects and sort of bokeh in the background, even when you only have that single 12 megapixel camera on the back. Getting questions, Nelson says, can you activate Google Assistant with the screen off? You should be able to. Let's give it a quick try here. Lock that, squeeze, and there you go. So you are able to activate Google Assistant with a squeeze. Uh, I'm sure the OK Google or the Hey Google, both of those work. That should work as well here. But yeah, it's a remarkably comfortable little device. This is a uh, Verizon model, although interesting note about the Pixel 2 and the Pixel 2 XL, both of them have eSIM. So if you're a Project Fi consumer, you'll be able to activate that eSIM. It's not entirely clear if this is going to be available at launch or shortly thereafter, but you will be able to use Project Fi on that eSIM. It's the first major smartphone out there to embrace the eSIM technology. We've seen a lot of companies sort of approach it. Apple has done that with the Apple Watch Series 3, but this is a big, big deal.